today on Chasing the Sun. Mother Nature makes the rules. Holy cow, this is fall fishing. It's 70 degrees. That's why me and Ed are all bundled up. We got a pretty good boat ride. We're gonna ride about 15 miles. I was excited to get out with Justin on the Dorado. It's his new boat. The forecast wasn't too good. It was supposed to improve, a little bumpy, but we're both used to being in these bay boats, so we felt comfortable running out. You know, this is our first time out there in the Dorado in these conditions, so for us, this is all new. When you're making a long ride like this, there's two things that I don't want to see when I pull up at a spot. First off, when I'm pulling up and I see another boat, not good. No. The second one is an apex predator. Which we had when we showed up. <laughs> I got bad news, Ed. Oh, half a snapper. Big old red grouper, look at that. All right. You know what? That's one of the one. That's the one that got bit by the shark. Yeah. This grouper found it down there and ate the stinking thing. Chasing the Sun is brought to you by DOA Fishing Lures, the unfair advantage, Dorado Boats, custom fishing boats, Dulce Vita Tequila, Fire Disc Cookers, built to haul, cooks it all, and by Grundens, we are fishing. Cow, this is fall fishing. It's 70 degrees. That's why me and Ed are all bundled up. We got a pretty good boat ride. We're gonna ride about 15 miles. Um, see if we can't catch some. Like most of the snapper, like red snappers closed, amberjacks closed. A lot of those seasons are closed for keeping fish here. Now we can catch and release all that stuff. But there's a lot of other things out here, like the vermilion snapper, mangrove snapper, stuff like that. Yeah. So we're all bundled up for this cold front. And uh, if you want to call it a cold front at 70, it's cold. <laughs> it is cold for us. Yeah. We're going to see if we can't catch a few of these other snappers. I was excited to get out with Justin on the Dorado. It's his new boat, and uh, you know I got out of a bay boat. This is a much bigger boat than I'm used to. The forecast wasn't too good. It was supposed to improve. A little bumpy, but we're both used to being in these bay boats, so we felt comfortable running out. Plus, we had a chase boat with us, too. And if you know Justin, he's so thorough. I mean, he has double and triple checked everything on that boat, all his safety gears, up to snuff. So uh, pretty important when you're going to run offshore in a bay boat like that. And I uh, felt super comfortable in that Dorado. Well, that was a ride. <laughs> Holy cow. That's about a 15 mile boat ride. We're sitting about 11, 12 miles off the beach. Um, you know, 100 foot of water. There's a big line of natural limestone bottom right here. Most of the bottom out here is sand, just like the white beach sand. Um, but then we have these uh, areas of, of live bottom that's actually limestone bottom. So it's hard limestone surface. And of course, it's covered with big corals and fans that grow off of it. It's really pretty if you get down there and dive in. It also creates structure for all these fish. I don't know what we're going to catch. Yeah, so I don't want to find lock out. On. <laughs> i tell you what, we're going to test out this spot lock today because this is about a, I don't know, 10 to 15 knot east wind, and we have some current pushing into it, so it's a little sporty. So much easier than dropping an anchor. Oh yeah, no doubt. There was no way we could anchor, but luckily we had the spot lock with our Minn Kota Altera, and uh, that was key to fishing this spot because it was truly, it was pretty rough. And uh, I'm not sure what forecast we looked at, but it really wasn't doing what it was saying. It didn't seem like it was gonna back off. So we dropped down and immediately I think immediately we start catching fish. I didn't got a bite yet, but I know it's not gonna be long. I like to start with a rod high, and then when I feel them thump it, thump it, thump it, and then just reel down on them. Yeah. There it is. All right. I got thumped on the way down. I never even made it down there. The good news is we're in 100 feet of water, and I only got to wind this fish up about 50 feet. 
It's a red snapper. All right. You're hard pressed to come out here to any of these reefs and not catch a red snapper. There's just a lot of them. And their swim bladder will actually push their stomach out of their mouth. So I'm not gonna keep them out of the water long. Usually if we get him right back in like that, he's got enough energy where he can swim right back down. Yeah, he's gone. You know, this is our first time out there in the Dorado in these conditions. So for us, this is all new. We had the dolphins and sharks. Oh, is that your first PCB mangrove? That right there is going to go to one of our local restaurants for hook and cook. You know, this is our first time out there in the Dorado in these conditions, so for us, this is all new. Being rough like that, it adds just a little bit uh, more level difficulty with everything from basically just standing up and keeping your balance on the boat to keeping your bait in contact with the bottom. You know, you're always kind of working it, wanting to keep it right in that zone. And these conditions that are thrown at us just make everything just a little bit more difficult, but really it wasn't too bad. We were in the back of the boat, even though there was quite a bit of up and down movement on the boat, we positioned, our, positioned ourselves on the boat where it wasn't as bad, but the boat actually did pretty well. We're utilizing the spot lock feature, which is just fantastic for doing stuff like this. I was really impressed because it was out of the water more than it was in the water, and it was really, it was working hard for us that day. And when you're making a long ride like this, there's two things that I don't want to see when I pull up at a spot. First off, when I'm pulling up and I see another boat that looks to be in the same location. Not good. No. You just invested 45 minutes, an hour of a boat ride to get there. So that's one bad thing to see. The second one is an apex predator. Which we had when we showed up, <laughs> right? We had both of them. Yeah. We had the dolphins and sharks. Realistically, it's just a sign of a good ecosystem. Um, these reefs are so full of life um, that obviously you're going to have things like dolphins and sharks there to feed on the reef fish. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I just got eight. Yeah. Oh, they let it go. Come back. Come back. What's after us? What's well, after us? I got bad news, Ed. Oh, half a snapper. He just got a lot shorter. Compliments of the man in the gray suit. There we go. Good news is I got him occupied over here. Hopefully you can get yours now. Yep, let's see. Go. Oh, there goes a mangrove snapper. Yeah. Awesome. Is that your first PCB mangrove? Here, I got a, a here, hold them over the boat, Ed. Yeah. I got a, a release well right here. I'm gonna show you how we release mangrove snappers right now. Okay. Yeah. There we go. All right, so this is how we release them. See this lid okay. right here? It goes straight yep. out the bottom. I got you. Don't, don't mind the icy sound <laughs> in here when they flip around. But uh, that right there is going to go to one of our local restaurants for a hook and cook. That sounds good to me. You might even get the invite. <laughs> my, Something different. It might be a bingo uh, coming up a little easier. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Nope, it's forever. Red. It's my favorite thing about coming to Panama City Beach is the diversity in the fishery. We There's no lack of that, it. that's for sure. Race to the bottom. <laughs> I think I got about a five second head start on you. <laughs> oh, there you go, hit. Three, two, one, getting a bite. Oh, I missed him. I missed him. He got thumped pretty good to see if he's still there. I like to drop him back down because if that bait's still on the hook, he'll usually get thumped again. Be 
Oh, there we go. Show me up. See if I bring you out here again. All right. <laughs> Yep, it's Rebel. Red. When these guys right there, you know, yeah. dime a dozen out here, they're just absolutely That's uh, so cool. We catch them like that in the bay. We actually catch them bigger than that in the bay. Really? Yeah. Crazy. There we go. Beautiful. Go home, buddy. That's awesome. We caught uh, a lot of trigger fish on this trip. I mean, they're everywhere. We're having some fun with these trigger fish and snapper. We're going big now. Yeah, we're up in everything a bit. Get a big old pinfish on here. I'm gonna drop it to the bottom. Big old red grouper, look at that. All right. We caught uh, a lot of trigger fish on this trip. And they're yeah. a good sized fish. Is that typical? Man, I'll tell you what, it is here right now. Um, it's not always been like that, but they're very highly regulated. So we have really short seasons on trigger fish. And because of that, they're just, I mean, I mean they're everywhere. Yep. Holy cow, that's a big old trigger fish. Y'all have a bunch of them. And they keep growing, because we can't keep them. That is a full grown trigger fish. And those teeth right there, they'll take a finger off. To, I guess to relay what's really happening is you have a water column that's 100 feet from the surface to the bottom. Most of these reef fish that we're trying to catch are on the bottom. And about halfway down is just a biomass of trigger fish. Oh, another trigger. <laughs> so as we're dropping these baits through there, these trigger fish are just eating them on the way down. Yeah. I always tell people, if you get to the bottom, and you count at five and you ain't got a bite, you ain't got a bait. <laughs> Those trigger fish ate your bait on the way down. So Ed, you know how we were hooking some of these little small snappers and stuff? Some of that, I was thinking it was a shark or something grabbing them. And I know we've had some of that, but some of those could have been big groupers grabbing our fish we're hooking. Yeah, definitely. And pulling them off these little hooks. So let's see if we can't catch some of them again and get some of these groupers to come check us out, and then we'll bait and switch and get the jigs back down. All that activity, draw them in. We're having some fun with these trigger fish and snapper. We're going big now. Yeah, we're up in everything a bit. Got a big old pinfish on here. I'm gonna drop it to the bottom. See if we can get another one of those groupers. Grouper. Look at that. All right, dude. Holy cow. Look at the snapper. He's trying to throw up. Oh my god. Grab him under his kids. That's for one of those. You got him under there? Those groupers, uh, when they bite, they give you 100%. All they got right up front. And if you can break them and you can beat them, in that first part of the water column and get them up off that reef, you got that fish. Let's get them in the boat. <laughs> That's like, what I'm talking about, dude. Ed. Woo. Dude, look at that snapper that he ate. That's crazy. You know what? That's one of the one, that's the one that got bit by the shark. Yeah. Sure that is. was the first snapper that I caught. That was awesome. Holy moly. <laughs> so my snapper got bitten by a shark. I threw the head in the water, just like that. And this grouper found it down there and ate the stinking thing. 
<laughs> well, he gets released with that snapper, that mangrove snapper. Out the secret shoot. There we go. Man, awesome job. Fantastic. Red groupers are open right now, and he's clearly big enough. And we so know he gets to going. join a mangrove snapper for our hook and cook. There we go. <laughs> if we don't watch out, he might eat that snapper in there. Yeah, I think he fills it up. Yeah, good job. Well, we've really caught a little bit of everything today. I know. I think you got another mango on there from the looks of it. One thing that I always appreciate when I come to Panama City Beach is the ability really to fish in all weather conditions. The Conservation Park, favorite destination for active locals and tourists. Chasing the Sun's been brought to you by Native Eyewear, built for the backcountry. Pirates Cove Marina, you enjoy the Gulf, we'll take care of the rest. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. Minn Kota. And by Visit Panama City Beach, real fun beach. Tucked back off Panama City Beach Parkway is a favorite destination for active locals and tourists. The Conservation Park. With over 2,900 acres and more than 24 miles of trails, the Conservation Park is a magnet for hikers, bikers, and nature lovers. Trails range anywhere from a half mile to 11 miles. The main building at the trailhead provides shelter, public restrooms, drinking water, and other amenities to visitors. This park operates under two principles, to protect and balance our natural resources while providing recreational opportunities to residents and visitors. This means you'll be sharing the park with its native wildlife. Be aware of your surroundings and respect the local inhabitant space. The park's must-see is the elevated boardwalks that lead you through cypress domes. Floating over the lime green covered backwaters and experiencing nature from this unique perspective is only one of the reasons to be sure to bring your camera and binoculars. There's a lot to see when you slow down and take time to watch Mother Nature perform. Well, we've really caught a little bit of everything today. I know. I think you got another mango on there from the looks of it. All right. Or what's a vermilion snapper? Take it. Whoa. Oh, no, that's a porgy. We call them white snappers here. That's actually a, a red porgy. And I'll right. tell you what, I'd let him join our uh, our cooler crowd in here because that's a fine eating fish. Okay. One of the best eating fish out here that people don't really know too much about. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll throw them in the box and that's try them. Right. One thing that I always appreciate when I come to Panama City Beach is the ability really to fish in all weather conditions. If it gets real bad, we run back inside and we have a great day fishing. Or if it's nice, if we're inside and it gets nice, it's not far to run offshore and do something completely different. And for me, the variety is what keeps me excited and passionate about it. I could just be on the flat catching trout and redfish and the wind lays down and the golf gets flat, we look at each other and we're like, hey, let's do this. And we're out the pass and, you know, fishing some bottom and having a great time. So always enjoy fishing Panama City Beach. I don't know, it's getting, starting to get a little rougher. What do you think? I think it's about time to head to the hill. Yeah, it's been a great day. <laughs> hey, non-stop action. I mean, I'm still getting bent right now. I'm, there we go, oh. But like you said, this wind's not gonna let up. The seas are gonna keep building. Yeah, we got a little ride, so let's take it to the hill. Sounds good, let's go. Well, that was a day. Uh, glad to be back here at the Holiday Inn Resort. We're chilling at the Sunset Lounge. 
a little rough, but a lot yeah. of fun. Well, I tell you what, um, you know, I look at this wind forecast. I look at it before the trip, during the trip, and I did expect to get a little let up in the wind, but the nice thing here is we have real good equipment. Uh, we don't have to go that far to get to really nice fish. So even though the wind didn't let up like I was hoping for, you know, we can still get out there, catch tons of fish, and, and hopefully get to show you the other side of Panama City Beach. Oh, it was a great trip. I enjoyed every minute of it.